Hello, this is Rebecca Freedom, and this is episode number 37 of Heard Not Seen, produced by John Beethan. Today, our topic is Earth Day and sex. Love it. Of course, if you have tender ears, hearts, or minds, know this is going to be an explicit and irreverent and sometimes even obscene. Like all the rest of the episodes. <laughs> Podcasts, yes. So... I want to pull up so a couple little facts about uh, Earth Day is that it started in 1970, and it was started in the United States by a senator named Gaylord, and the mm. reason it came about was it was a revolution against the Industrial Revolution um, in uh, the industrial in- industries who were pumping out so much uh, toxins into the environment. I know I was not here in the 70s, but I know there was a thickness of clouds that ho- came over the cities like Detroit and New York. And they I had- remember it well. Yeah. So maybe you can describe for the people a little bit about what the air was like back in the 70s. Well, I'm not so sure about the air, but at the time I was living in Portland, Oregon, where I'm from. And the Willamette River at that point was really getting highly polluted. And um, mm, it was just sort of this green sludge. And so they were warning people, don't swim in the river. Don't swim in the Tualatin River. Don't swim in all these rivers fed by aquifers. And, you know, Oregon's sort of known for good, clean water. But there was all this toxic material in the water. And the air was always pretty clean, so I'm not so sure about it. So you'll have to speak about Detroit, New York, and all the rest of it. So, of course, we have nothing other than HBO series Mad Men to rely on as (laughs) historic-based value to really show us. Because let's say, uh, you know, PBS has fallen off there. You know, everything is turned into entertainment. But what you do see is snippets of what the 70s were like. And they had days. They had to keep all their windows closed. It was too toxic to go outside. So... um, Again, Earth Day, and I'm going to read it in my 1900 voice. You're welcome. For a good time, celebrate Earth Day. Earth Day was founded by Senator Gaylord Nielsen on April 26th, 1970. Mm. Ladies man. <laughs> 20 million people par- participated in the first Earth Day. More than 1 billion pieces of junk mail are delivered in the United States each year. That's right. We got junk in your box. <laughs> you not, the U.S. Um, buried or burned more than 166 million tons of resources, paper, plastic, metals, glass, and organic materials in landfills and incinerators last year year. Recycling, however, saves three to five times the energy that waste incinerators uh, generate. And currently, the tropical rainforests that we once knew are down to 50%. Hmm. And we are losing the lungs of the earth. And that, my friends, is not sexy at all. And the Great Barrier Reef is pretty much dead. What we're seeing is a planet. Of course, we're sitting here on talking about Earth Day and, and what it means to take time out to celebrate this rock hurling through space covered in this vast foliage. And what's also happening is due to the advance in consciousness or technology, people are living longer and therefore consuming more. And not only that, the population is up to around 8 billion. Mm. And you hear people talk about this in a political sense, you know, about turf wars and about the homeless and about the 1%. And what we're really saying is we are all clamoring for survival on a planet that has limited resources, air, clean air, clean water, clean food. Now, 
Let's talk about those resources and how you can give a fuck and do something. So I recently watched, and of all places, Chelsea Handler do a little bit on elections. That elections typically happen in districts, like your district will have someone who will represent it. And um, she was talking to a guy, I think his name is Nunoz, and I'll add the link to the to the thing on Netflix, um, the series, where he raised $80,000 to run for his district. The person opposing him raised $1.6 million to run against him in the poorest district. Now think about the shady shit that's going down to garner votes, to dissuade the voice of the people, and to perpetuate apathy in a way that you just accept, this is my hood, and this is where I'm at, and I don't have a voice, and I'm just not going to give a fuck. And again, this was coming from our show, so as we're talking about Earth Day, and we're talking about Sex and Earth Day. These are both, I think, areas that we need to be more conscious and give a fuck about the planet and give a fuck about fucking. You know what I'm fucking saying? So you, John, are a participant in several sort of different environmental movements, I would say, groups. Um, that are really doing their part to bring consciousness to this, um, to water, to air, to sovereign rights. So I would love if you could speak about those groups a little bit, about where people can actually plug in okay. and give a fuck. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I work as a volunteer for North County Eco Alliance, NCEA, at Alliance. Dot org. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and the mission for most of these organizations, but this one in particular, is um, to be a platform and to educate and inspire for those people desiring sustainability. Okay. So, last night we did a co venture with Seaside Sisters, who are very well known for doing film screenings throughout the year and education and earth care events. And there was, I think, around 240 people there. And so we, they did the film screening, a screening of Racing Extinction. Mm. So, mm. yeah. So, um, but I also work with Immersus, which is an emerging nonprofit with one of their projects under it known as um, San Diego Water Protectors, which really was created and inspired by what was going on in Standing Rock. So our focus there is totally water Mm -hmm. and a little early to talk about its mission because it's still being formed. But um, what I would suggest people do is follow us at expertise.tv where we're going to be rolling out a lot of content that's totally interactive. You can jump on, ask questions and be there. So where you would find that is simply email us at learn at N-C-E-C-O-A-L-L-I-A-N-C-E dot org. Mm-hmm. Or simply go to expertise.tv and create an account and we'll get you plugged show in. Show notes, for sure. We'll put it we and so much more. We're talking yeah. video. We're talking audio. Yeah. We're talking poll. I mean, it's highly interactive. And so my main thing is just educating people. It's like I'm at a place right now. It's like there's there's no time to talk about it. You know, just do one thing. Mm. So part of what we're going to be doing is launching just big campaigns about, like, just do one thing. What's your one idea? Rebecca, I ask you, what is the one thing you could do? The one thing that I do is that I um, refill my water jugs, and I try to use a really – the reuse sort of – Reuse. Yeah, reuse. And um, because pa- plastic is really prolific since it's been since its invention since in its inception, 
It is in every single industry. It's in our cars, it's in our computers, it's in our phones. It's like, and the different grades of plastic and the different grades of recycl- recyclability around it. So what I would say is I don't see a future uh, a cl- soon that we're going to be completely plastic free. Right. All right. So I'm going to, since we're here and we're talking about it, is yes. like all you folks out there going, yeah, but I recycle. So here's the fact. The fact is only whether you recycle or not, only 20% of it gets recycled. And that adds up a couple of years. The figure was 9 billion tons end up in the oceans, end up in landfills. God, it's just heartbreaking. Yeah, it is. And it's just stupid. So we recommend, because I work with AlkawayUSA.com and we do water filtration and ionization, is we recommend people use glass because mm-hmm. glass is the only thing that doesn't interact with the water. Mm-hmm. And plastic, everybody, you know, people go, oh, well, I got a BPA-free plastic. Well, it's plastic it's and plastic. it does leach. And all you got to do is like Fill it up, let it sit in your hot car for a couple hours, and you have just poisoned and toxined yourself. So it's just use glass and reuse. And the other thing is like Ashley Mazanik, you know, she does the podcast, upcoming podcast, and has a whole series called Let's Talk About the Weather. Mm -hmm. So Ashley's, one of her pet peeves, and she's an awesome educator, totally inspired, is Trader Joe's is wonderful place. Really, really good quality food, but they have a real packaging problem. Mm. It's just there's so much stuff, plastic and stuff that just, you know, once again, it's not all going to get recycled. So we have to move towards community, um, you know, food banks where things aren't are bulk. You, you, well, you farmers, go in with your farmers, containers. Yeah, farmers markets are great for that. But I understand like in the Midwest and other places geographically that you're restricted around that. But certainly, certainly it is an awareness Mm -hmm. of people when you go to Costco and you buy all the plastic bottles and you just have them in the back of your car. And I know so many people that do this, it's like unnecessary. Mm -hmm. It's just not, you know, 35 cents, you can get a gallon, you can, there's so many um, water filtration places that just you add it to your list of like a grocery run, I'm going to take my um, three gallon glass Mm -hmm. jar Mm -hmm. and fill it up and and if there's lots of you then you'll do more you know or you have where you're having water delivered to you whatever or you buy a filtration system you Mm -hmm. buy something that is is going to um, promote sustainability because and jeff bridges and i'm gonna have to look up the org dot org um it's about plastic about you know getting plastic out of our oceans and getting rid of the plastic addiction. And I will say it's the petroleum addiction as well. And there is a documentary called The True Cost, which is about our disposable fashion industry. Mm -hmm. Fashion has become the second highest polluter Mm -hmm. because the fabrics in which that we're wearing are petroleum based fabrics um, the elastics, the yoga pants, the, they're not cotton based. They they show a whole thing about the cotton fields being completely sprayed by Monsanto products mm-hmm. that are just covered in pesticides. And then they bankrupt the farmers growing the cotton so much so that um, the suicide rate is one every 30 minutes that a farmer drinks the pesticide that he's putting on the fields and dies because he cannot pay back the plot of land that was given him to raise. It's it's really sickening. And so um, just a piece of the documentary is that couture clothing, right? Ready to wear clothing that was stylized and came out two to three times a year. There were two to three cycles of this is the spring, here's Mm -hmm. the fall, and here's the winter. And in summer, you sort of, you know, there might be one or two pieces. And that's why we saw a higher caliber of clothing, like Yves Yves Saint Laurent, Mm -hmm. old Dior, like these brands were built off of their craftsmanship and Mm -hmm. the quality of the product. And uh, I will say that they are now carrying on the name of the brand, the quality is not the same. There's lots of knockoffs and write downs. So here's the sickening thing. 
H&M, Forever 21, Kohl's, Target, several, several retailers who price out their clothes sometimes at $5, $10 for a pair of jeans, just because the, it's the supply and demand have 57 cycles. That's more than the weeks in the year. For every week in the year, there's a cycle of fashion that gets pumped out and it's cheap throwaway clothes. You wash it twice and you, and the um, goodwill cannot keep up with the influx of this. And so it goes into the landfills, leaches out and is completely a pollutant. Mm -hmm. Be mindful of the clothes you are buying. Don't just run out and get the cheapest thing. Really, I think this is where self-discipline comes in and it, the way that we present and hold ourselves, and what fabrics we're allowing on our bodies are all a contribution to Mother Earth. Be mindful. In fact, if you go, are going to be an advocate for something, stop this ridiculous 57 cycles of releasing fashion. Mm-hmm. Let's get back to the higher quality yeah, and and well, can I, yeah. I want to step back a little bit? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I think that's all fine. I mean, part, the biggest problem is consumerism. All right, so I'm not going to get into the economics and all the rest of it, but one thing I found that works for me is that I'm not really seeking things outside myself to make me happy. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I mean, look around you. Yes. I mean, I can sit in this room now with these old antique Indian blankets and and just just be with them. So anyway, I, I, I think a lot. I don't drive just to, oh, I got to go to the store and get something. You know, my car will probably sit for a couple days right now because mm-hmm. when I go out, I make the rounds. Mm-hmm. And I do know here in San Diego, people are driving constantly, you know, and it's just like, really? So... You know, one thing I'm doing is I'm really getting behind collaborative, interactive web webinars, mm. mainly because you can be anywhere and you can be involved and not have to, like, really use up the resources to get around. Nothing actually can replace sitting around a campfire looking somebody straight in the eye in a meeting, whatever. Yes. The, nothing can replace that. But a whole lot of this can can uh, you can just, like, you know, dial it back. And just think about the impact. Just think about what your impact's going to be doing whatever. So one of my little projects I'm going to be doing is taking the garbage can Mm -hmm. and laying it out on a plastic tarp and go through it and see exactly what could have been recycled or not even purchased. You understand? We don't do that. We stick it in the garbage can. Like today is trash day. There's two garbage cans out there. One's recycled, one's garbage. It's just like ridiculous. Mm. We don't really think about it. It's out of sight, out of mind. So let's go over, because I'm sure that people want into the tantalizing topic of how sex relates to Earth Day. So let's give them some bullet points of just the one thing you can do. Uh, and we, we've gone through so many of them. So one of the things is curb your plastic addiction and reuse right? Mm -hmm. Reuse. The second is you can communicate uh, over webinars and really connect to people that way. You can put your body in places where there are causes happening and use your voice to stand up for what matters. It's really important that people voice themselves. The anti-Trump resistance, they said the day after he was elected, the, the women's marches were in the millions all across the globe and our voices in unison matter. It's Mm -hmm. true what they say. United we stand Mm -hmm. and divided we fall and don't let the clowns in office make you think that you can't make a difference. Find your one thing, Mm -hmm. your one thing, that you can be diligent and it becomes a lifestyle change. So you, while you're here on earth, can be a contribution more than a parasite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So I'll say, and I don't know if you want to add anything to the list, of uh, a couple well, suggestions as far as the things that can well, be done. Yeah. I mean, what I'm saying to people out there, you've got your earbuds in there and just, you know, what you want to do, not what you need to do or anything else. You can do whatever you want, but just sit back and contemplate what is the one thing you can do and share it with us and share it with other people too and see how your life could change. I mean, the one thing I did over 10 years ago was unplug my cable. My stress went way down. Mm. And I got out of the propaganda churn. And now I'm very selective. And I don't get news from Facebook. Mm -hmm. Just one thing. Just one thing. So speaking of that one thing, you can be, and I'm going to coin the term, uh, eco sex partner, <laughs> eco sex partner. And you're partnering, of course, with another body. And I'm not talking about sex in the form of masturbation, although that does that it has a, its own ecology <laughs> yeah, in and of it itself. Um, and conservation mm-hmm. <laughs> in and of itself, but truly when it comes to uh, sex and procreation, I I discovered something recently that I thought was just so curious. Because after years of being a relationship counselor and a therapist and a medium and doing the work that I do, you start to see patterning in people. You start to see... um, people who respond to their bodies, Mm -hmm. to the sexual energy and the prana and the kundalini energy in their bodies with shame Mm. and shut down and a lack of acceptance, but that comes out in compulsion, Mm -hmm. comes out in kink. It comes out, it just comes out. And then you see the other people who are sexually expressed and seem free and just out there equally insecure with their bodies. Mm. You know, we have, there's a sweet spot that you can find. So this is what I discovered because I love words in etymology.com. My friend prompted me to look up the word perversion Mm. because, you know, we're perverse in our sexuality because of the consumption of porn and the just consumption of things. And perversion came out of English law. And English law was that if you were not a heterosexual couple who was was having sex, For the sole sake of procreation, you were perverted. So I'm going to spin this all the way around (laughs) to 2017 Mm -hmm. and say that we can be eco-perverted sex partners who are having sex and having pleasure, but not contributing to the human race through procreation. Say that one more time. We can be eco-sex partners who are perverted because we are not heterosexual and we are having sex for pleasure, but we are not procreating and growing the human race. In fact, we are Mm. using, and I would quote my friend Miriam, pleasure as medicine. We are saying I will commune with my body and another body in a way that invites true pleasure and the echoing out of those positive vibrations, the respect, the love, the exchange, because what we do to our bodies and how we use our bodies, especially in a sex, sexual place and a sensual place directly impacts mother earth. Boom. Boom. Sermon had. <laughs> you feel that? So, yeah, I do. And so say say more about how it affects Mother Earth. And when you say affect, 
Yes. So yes. how does it affect Mother Earth? If we had a moment to put in a black choir right here, I would be like, let's sing, child. Let's sing. Heal the world. Make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying. If you care enough for the living. <laughs> Thank you, Michael Jackson. I think your voice is getting better, actually. Well, I apologize to everybody who can sing for real. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask you again, how does yes. it affect the earth? How it affects the earth. I gave you earth. some time to think about it. You did, and I sang. So just channel it in. Let's I will get channel you done. in. Okay, let me just be really clear okay. about what our insecurities do. Women pump Botox into their face, yeah. botulism into their face, so that they have these straight square faces that don't wrinkle. Do that have There's no mapping of emotion on the face. Mm. What do you think wrinkles are? Mm-hmm. They are... They are the tracing, and you do see men with like dark frown lines who have worked in cold offices and not been appreciated for who they are. And when we are disguising these, I was like, think of the graveyards. You're going to walk over patches of land if that woman Botox her face so much. Ain't no grass growing there, you know? So, and then, and then beyond that, anxiety, depression, the, um, the absolute influx from big pharma for uh, antipsychotics, antidepressant, anti-anxiety uh, medications, and that we're and you, what do you think happens when you ingest that medication? Where does it go? Out of your body and into the planet, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So you have taken this uh, altered substance, this not from nature substance in the pharmacy. It's not like you're taking um, Rishi mushroom and it just, you know, the, it breaks down in your body's metabolism and goes out as a, you know, natural sort of product with hydrogen, carbon, a whatever natural else. Cycle. A natural cycle. Mm-mm. We have these synthetic. Well, synthetic mo- pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Synthetic pharmaceuticals um, and molecules going into our body that are creating um, you know, like the, a toxic environment in our body. So if a toxic environment is in our body, it's going to go outside of our body. And one of the ways that sex impacts all this is that our ability to be intimate and connected and not just these primal animalistic hooking up creatures is that we slow down and we have more reverence for our bodies, our psyches, our hearts, and our mind. And you connect in Mm -hmm. to the vibrational hertz of Mother Earth. And I believe there is a like 7.4 something. The Schumann Residence. The Schumann Residence. With Jessica Louis Brand. Yes. Talks about. And that girl is just, she's, she's a magical unicorn, just in, incredible. One blessed to have her as a friend. And I recently had a day uh, where I found out my ex-boyfriend who I love dearly is now, he had a disease where he's going blind. He is now blind. The day has come. And it was just like this shock of just like, oh my God. And it's not even my life, right? But just like the realization of what must be unfolding for him. So I went and saw Jessica oh, and she awesome. stuck her tuning forks on me and it just my heart just opened right back up again mm-hmm. so i mentioned that to say that if on, you're on antidepressants if you're on anti-anxiety pills mm-hmm. um, m- um most of that can be managed by the transforming of your mind mm-hmm. through energy through reiki through yoga practice, through exercise. It doesn't have to be this weird woo-woo thing. These are these are highly there's there's so many studies now with EEGs, brain waves, theta, alpha, beta, gamma, of how to be able to control biofeedback to control and impact your body. Mm-hmm. Um, and certainly the fastest feedback loop is when you're naked with somebody else, you know? And you feel all the feels mm-hmm. that that come up. So to answer your question succinctly, how does how we treat our body affect Mother Earth? Every choice we make can be one for creation or for destruction, for consumerism or for collaboration. It can be made to move in the direction of enlightenment or apathy 
fear, and shame. So it's like you choose. You choose. We choose. This is where it's imperative in the way that you're doing that you find community or you find a guide that can help you process through the experiences of this lifetime. I want to say a little bit more of that because I just spent the last 10 days editing Breakup Rehab, which will be coming out in November by New World Library. Awesome. Who also released Eckhart Tolle, Power of Now, and also Peaceful Warrior. I happen to be one of their authors, I think one of the hundredth authors working with them. And in my edits, I started talking about destiny. And what is that? Does it mean that this life, it's, this life is all mapped out and written? It doesn't matter what you choose. And what I would say to that is the destiny has dominion over your direction. You have dominion over your body and your body is a vehicle in which your purpose will be realized. Does that make sense? Oh, sure. There is something, there's an energy and a place and a purpose for your incarnation, Mm -hmm. your spirit in this lifetime to be an advocate possibly to stand up for Mother Earth, to really find where your heart is leading you. That is the greater direction of your life. How you think, feel, and act about it is you, the you that observes you, the Atman. We don't know where thoughts come from, but once we have an inspiration, spirit in the body, we can then interact with that thought and choose to go in the direction of denial and resistance or openness and responsiveness. And I think the same can be said, and when we do that, we'll realize our purpose, and the same can be said for the care we take while we're here on earth. Uh, We can respond to the needs that are so present now, clean water, clean air, clean food. We are the consumers that drive the market. We are seeing inventors come out of the woodwork. And I do believe that this is the last regime in office, the Republican regime that we're seeing, the stupidity. I think that is all that's going to do is add fuel to the fire for the eco-revolution that is upon us. And I know that Leo did a movie on it recently as well. Do you remember the name? Mm-mm, mm-mm. We'll Google and put it in the notes. So that's what I have to say about sex and Earth Day. How you treat yourself, how you treat your partner directly affects the planet. And then we enter into this ontological loop, this loop of existence that which we create creates us back. So it's, you know, if you're in a toxic environment, you're going to be a toxic person. And it's a choice. I have nothing further to say. Yeah, we're going to close on that. So if you're finding yourself full of anxiety, depression, struggling in your relationships, or just not knowing how to fulfill your purpose this lifetime, I invite you to reach out to me at RebeccaFreedom.com. That's R-E-B-E-K-A-H, freedom.com.